What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again with another LaunchBox tutorial. Today we're going to be covering GameCube and Wii using the standalone version of Dolphin. Now there's a lot to go over in the Dolphin emulator, but in this video I'm just going to give you a quick rundown, how to get it installed, how to set your controller up, all the settings we need to get it to exit correctly from LaunchBox or Big Box, but getting it to run at full speed really depends on the PC you have. Now, I've actually had really good luck with Dolphin on lower-end PCs. Even a built-in Intel HD 4600 runs a lot of games at full speed at the lowest resolution. But if you're looking to output 1080p, 1440, or 4K with the Dolphin emulator, you'll need a little more power than a built-in Intel HD 4600. So just keep in mind, performance with the Dolphin emulator really comes down to what kind of PC you're running it on. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. First things first, you'll need some GameCube and or Wii games. On my desktop, I have a folder called Nintendo GameCube. These are the games I'm going to be using. They are .iso. Now with Wii games, you can either use ISO or WBFS games, and that's what I'm going to be using for Wii, but I have ISO for GameCube. Now to get the Dolphin emulator installed on your PC, we can actually do it from within LaunchBox. We can head up to the Settings, Tools, Manage Emulators, we're going to add an emulator, and from the drop down here, we're going to choose Dolphin. It'll come up with a link right here, and it'll open up a web page for us. So I'm going to go ahead and download the latest version, Windows X64. And now this is sitting in my downloads folder, but I want to place it somewhere convenient. So I'm going to show in folder, snap this over to the left hand side. And I'm also going to open up my LaunchBox folder where I have LaunchBox installed. Inside of here, I have a folder named emulators, and that's where I'm going to be placing it. But first we need to extract it. I'm using 7-zip here, so I'm just going to extract here. It's going to be in its own folder. And I'm going to take Dolphin, place it right in my emulator folder in my LaunchBox installation directory. So now I have it somewhere safe and I know exactly where it is. So the first thing we really need to do before we go back to LaunchBox is start up Dolphin for the first time. There are a lot of tutorials online on how to get Dolphin working on lower end systems, but if you're running, let's say a third gen i3 with at least a GT710, you shouldn't have any trouble running these games at the lowest resolution. So the first thing we need to do from within Dolphin is go to Config, Interface, and we want to make sure Confirm on Stop is unchecked. This is going to allow us to easily exit from within LaunchBox and BigBox. We don't have to do any confirmation to exit when we press Escape on our keyboard or use our hotkeys. We're going to close this down. Next, I'm going to head over to the Graphics section. The back end I prefer using is OpenGL, but there are others to choose from. We have Vulkan, DirectX 12, and DirectX 11. If you have a capable enough machine, I definitely recommend using OpenGL. I leave VSync on. You can experiment with these settings. And I always have Use Full Screen checked. This is important because when we launch a game from within LaunchBox or BigBox, we want it to go full screen. Another option I usually change is just Show FPS so I know the game's running fine on my system. Compile shaders before starting. This is something that is kind of new to the Dolphin emulator, but I always leave it checked. Under Enhancements, Internal Resolution. Now this is going to be the internal resolution of the game we're playing. Even if we're on a 1080p display, we could go to 5K if your system can handle it, but if you're on a 1080p display, I would recommend just sticking with 1080p. If you're on a lower end machine, make sure you're on native. 640 by 528, the native resolution of the original GameCube. Moving down the list a little bit, anti-aliasing, MSAA up to 8X, and SSAA up to 8X. Usually I'm sitting around two. This is just going to help us with any kind of jaggies, especially at a lower resolution. You can also add a little more filtering if you'd like to. Now, to tell you the truth, this is really all I change. And on my systems, I'm usually sitting about 1080p, 2X MSAA, and 2X on the filtering. That's pretty much all I've ever had to mess around with. There are some hacks that can be applied to some games, and we also have an advanced section. Really, what it's going to boil down to is the system you're running the Dolphin emulator on. If you have a capable system, you shouldn't have any trouble running at 1080p with the settings I have here. You shouldn't have to mess around with hacks or advance to get it to run any better. I'm going to close this down, and now we need to move over to our controller. So for my GameCube controller, I'm going to go ahead and map it here, Standard Controller, I'll click Configure. 
I have an Xbox One controller connected to my PC right now. From the drop down, find the device you have connected, even if it's an arcade stick. I'm using an X input gamepad, which is the Xbox controller. And from the button section, we can map our buttons. Over on the left hand side, this is going to be the A button for the GameCube controller. And this is going to be the button we're going to map on our controller we're using. So if I click on this and press A on my Xbox controller, it'll map it as A. Same thing with B, all the way down the list. A, B, X, Y, we have start, our D-pad, our control stick, which will be our left analog stick, our C stick, which will be our right analog stick, and our shoulder buttons over here. It's very easy to get this up and running. Once you've mapped all your buttons, click close. And now you have a GameCube controller mapped for Dolphin. And by the way, Wii games that work with the GameCube controller will work with the config we just entered. Now if we're looking to map, let's say, a Wiimote, we'll move down to Wiimote. This is my first remote. Emulated Wii remote. Configure. Same thing applies here. X input and my buttons. So if I want this to be A, I'll press A on my controller. B on my controller. And so on and so on. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of emulating Wii games that didn't support some type of controller. There's a lot of games on the Wii that never supported real controllers, and you'll have to set this up like a Wiimo, and it just, in my opinion, doesn't make sense to do, unless you're using some type of adapter like the Mayflash adapter and a real Wiimo and Nunchug. And it works fine with the Dolphin emulator, so if that's something you'd like to pick up, you can always do that. So we are now done with the settings inside of the Dolphin emulator for GameCube and Wii. It's time to move back over to LaunchBox so we can get our games imported. All right, so now that we have the Dolphin emulator set up and in the correct location, we're gonna go to our emulator application path. Remember, we move this to our LaunchBox directory in emulators, Dolphin x64, and we'll choose the dolphin.exe. Under associated platforms, make sure we have Nintendo GameCube and Wii checked here as the default emulator and click OK. We're going to close this down and now it's time to import our games. From the drop down, we'll go to Tools, Import, ROM Files. First up, I'm going to import my GameCube games. So I'll click Next. I'm going to add that full folder that I have on my desktop. Nintendo GameCube. I'm going to click OK and Next. Platform for imported games, Nintendo GameCube. Next, the Dolphin emulator should show up as the default emulator. And I'm going to choose copy the files into my LaunchBox games folder. Now you can place them there already. And if you do that, just use them in their current location. But mine are on my desktop and I want them in my LaunchBox directory. So this thing is fully portable. Yes, we want to download metadata for our game. I'm going to search for the game information from the LaunchBox games database. I'm going to select all here. Same thing with EMU Movies. If you have an account, go ahead and choose everything. Would you like to specify any custom options? We don't need to for this specific emulator, so we'll click Next. Here's the name of the game, the game location, and the file extension. My GameCube games are ISO. I'll click Finish. It's now going to import all of my games to my LaunchBox directory and download my artwork that I need. Just give this a little while to finish up. So my GameCube games were successfully imported. I'll click OK. And we now have a new section over here on the left-hand side, Nintendo GameCube. I can start playing right now. Just go with Soul Calibur 2. It gives me my beautiful loading screens here. And we're now in-game. Just skipped ahead to get into some gameplay, and this game looks absolutely amazing at 1080p. If you've never tried it, definitely give it a shot. Now, if you want to exit the game here, you can always use your hotkeys to go to the pause menu or press escape on your keyboard. I'm just going to exit from the pause menu, scroll down to exit, and it'll bring us right back in the launch box. And now all that's really left to do is import our Wii games. Same way we did our GameCube games, we're using the same emulator. We'll go to Tools, Import, ROM Files. I'm going to add that whole folder that's on my desktop. Next, you need to switch the platform to Nintendo Wii, Dolphin Emulator. I'm going to copy the files into my LaunchBox directory. 
search for game information from the LaunchBox Games database, make sure I have all of my images selected, and finish. My Wii games are now imported, have a new section, Nintendo Wii, and we can start playing from here. So with a game like Smash, you can play with a regular controller. I'm not even going to get into any gameplay right now, but as you can see up in the top right hand corner, this PC should handle it quite well at 1080p. Pause menu. Exit. And that's pretty much it. I hope you have GameCube and Wii up and running inside of LaunchBox and Big Box. Like I mentioned, there are a lot of settings that you can mess around with in Dolphin, but if you have a capable machine, you really shouldn't have any trouble running these at 1080p. Dolphin does have a full compatibility list over on their website for Wii and GameCube. Some games just don't work well on any hardware, but they've got a large portion of the library running quite well with the Dolphin emulator. We really appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions at all, let us know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.